Okay, so what we're looking into in this last example is to determine the remainder. And you might initially be thinking, well, let's just apply synthetic division. And synthetic division is perfectly fine, but the kind of issue that you run into, especially like with this first example, that's a lot, that's a big polynomial with a lot of like missing terms. You have 15, you have 13, 12, 10, you know, 11, a lot of missing zeros. And to do synthetic division like this could be um, a lot of work. And even this one, this one's not as bad. You could do it. But then you also see like fractions. It's like, who wants to do synthetic division with fractions? So what this brings us back to is actually a definition we talked about much earlier in this lesson, which was the remainder theorem. And basically the remainder theorem states that if a polynomial f of x is divided by, you know, x minus k, then the remainder is f of k. So the remainder r is equal to f of k. So that means... If our factor is x minus k, like in this example, x minus 3, that means 3 is going to be r0. And then all we need to do to find the remainder is plug it into our equation. So looking at our example here, we have our factor is x minus 7. I'm sorry, x minus 7. Our factor here is x minus 1. So the first step we'll want to do, let's use, let's do red. So I'll do, you know, just take your factor. Set it equal to 0 to find the 0. x equals 1. Now, rather than doing synthetic division with 1, which, again, you could do, you can just take, you can just evaluate for f of 1. So take this as being our function, f of x, and just plug 1 into it. And the nice thing about this is, um, oh, I didn't pick any of those. I should have done that. That would have been a good example. Um, what I was thinking of, do an example with uh, a negative number. Because remember, it doesn't matter if it's raised to the 16th power or the 14th power. Any negative number raised to a even power is always going to be positive. And then any negative number raised to an odd power is always going to be, um, is going to be negative. So I didn't choose an example like that. So I'll probably do that on the homework or a quiz or something like that. FYI. So... In this example, 1 raised to the 16th power is basically meaning 1 multiplied by itself 16 times, which is just 1. And then four, 1 multiplied by itself 14 times is just 1 again, but you're having the minus. So it's 1 minus 1. And then plus 1 raised to the 9th power is plus 1, and then minus 1. So 1 minus 1 plus 1, you can see this actually gives you to 0. Now, kind of going back to those theorems. So my remainder is equal to 0. Now, this is important this is important up here because this is their factor theorem. If our remainder, so when we do this, when we plug in our f of k and we get 0, what that means is x minus k is a factor. So in this example, um, x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial. That means x minus 1 evenly divides into that polynomial, and that's important. So therefore, x equals 1 is actually a 0 of the polynomial. And now you could, you know, algebraically kind of do synthetic division and keep on, you know, doing, um, finding more zeros to find all the zeros of that polynomial. So that's important about understanding the factor theorem as well as looking into the remainder theorem. Now, in this next one, we have a fraction. And again, who wants to do fractions with all of these with synthetic division? You can, and it's not a problem. But um, a lot of students will make mistakes with fractions. So I would say, let's go ahead and find the zero. Right, x equals 1 half, and let's just plug it in. So now I'm just going to do evaluate f of 1 half. Now you might look at this and say, well, I don't even want to do fractions, you know, fractions by evaluating. And I kind of get your point, but I think it's, a, I, would, I would say this is going to be a little bit easier than um, having to do synthetic division. So 1 half cubed is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 eighth, minus 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth, plus 1 half, plus 1. Now, I wanted to do this because I want to do a little fraction operations. Remember, we can only combine fractions when they have common, common denominators. So the common denominator of four, 8, 4, 2, and 1, really, you could write that over 1, is 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite all of these in terms of with a denominator of 8. So what I'd have to do over here is I'd have to multiply by 2 over 2. And remember, just to multiply the same multiplier by the top and the bottom, here, I'd have to multiply by 4 over 4. And again, all I'm doing is, since I'm multiplying the same number on the top and the bottom, I'm not changing the value of the fraction. I'm just getting it to so it has common denominators. So now I have 1 eighth minus 2 eighths plus 4 eighths plus 8 over 8. And then now you can see they all have the common denominator, so I can just add the numerator. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1 
plus 4 is going to be 3, plus 8 is 11. So my remainder is 11 over 8. And that's important because that tells us that 2x minus 1 is not a factor of this because the remainder is 11 eighths, right? Now we could write this as a quotient, um, you know, a summary statement here, but it's just important that that is going to be the remainder. Um, and since the remainder is not zero, it is not a zero of the polynomial. So that's kind of just your idea of using the remainder theorem, how it can be applied. You can use the synthetic division to find the remainder. You can use long division to find the remainder. But typically on problems like this, you're going to see problems where there's multiple zeros. You're going to have polynomials to a really high power. So using long division or synthetic division is not going to be preferred. But understanding the remainder theorem is going to be helpful. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your irrational zeros of polynomials tutorial.